Today's video is sponsored by SmartArt. Hey everyone and welcome back to Art à la carte. This video is, yes, another opening of the SmartArt box. Every month they send me a new box with a whole bunch of art supplies focused on a general theme. This one is pop art. And in this box, they sent me some Fabricastel gelatos, which I had seen in the store, but I'd never tried before. When I opened them up, I thought they look so much like makeup that I decided instead of swatching them on the paper, I would swatch them on my hand because, you know, that's what makeup people do. It doesn't go very well on hands. I wouldn't recommend it. Also in this box is a Stamper's Big Brush Pen, a really nice tablet of watercolor paper. There were 30 sheets, 140 pound weight, there were a variety of brushes, including stippling brushes and a really nice watercolor brush, which I really, really like this brush. And last but not least was some stencils, which I was really excited about. Just recently, I thought it would be fun to introduce stenciling into some of my art pieces. So this is kind of a first take on this. All of the smart art boxes so far have been messy. And as you guys know, I'm not a super messy artist. I don't like to get my fingers super dirty. I like to contain my chaos. So I figured this is going to be messy as well. So pulled out the good old messy mat and started playing around with the art products themselves. Usually in these types of videos, I like to take you step by step on how I created a piece and have the focus on that kind of a journey. This video is going to be a little bit different. I want the focus of this video to be the experience or the lesson that I learned from creating this piece, or should I say pieces. For this is the video of the three sailor moons. Okay, so to set the stage, this is a pop art theme. Um, the example they had was Wonder Woman, which when I saw that, I was like, oh, I wanna do Wonder Woman, but I didn't wanna totally copy what they did. So I thought, what is an iconic image for me in my life, in my art career? And I, I had a couple, I thought Mickey Mouse would be fun, but then I thought ah, Sailor Moon. She was what introduced me to the wonderful world of anime and so many good art things came from this. So I thought I'm going to do Sailor Moon. So the instructions told, me to take and sketch out the design of my character and then to cut them out kind of like a stencil. That way I could place in the background color without getting the underneath side all messed up and yuck. So I did that, cut it out, stuck it onto my paper and began to apply the first layer of gelato. Now the instructions say that you can smear this out and then add water and it, and it turns into kind of watercolor. And I was finding very quickly that I did not like the feel. I am not a waxy, oil pastel-y kind of person. As you know, I have no oil pastel videos on my channel right now because they're not my favorite thing. And this texture is exactly that. So I thought, we'll just push through it. Once we get the water on, it'll turn into watercolor. I love watercolor. Watercolor is my, my safety art form. But when I put the water on it, it really didn't do anything. And I went, eh, <laughs> I wish it was more watercolory. I pushed through because the next part was the stenciling, which as you guys know, I'm very excited to stencil. So I pulled out the yellow. I was going to make these yellow starbursts, started to apply the yellow and the yellow and the blue kind of mixed, which made this kind of weird greenish yellow, which was not what I was looking for. So at this point, I'm beginning to get a little frustrated. I'm not thrilled with the colors. Two of the colors are very desaturated and two of the colors are very bold, which in my mind wasn't working. I really wanted to have like this deep, dark, vibrant blue and maybe a really super opaque white. To top it off, when I peeled off the stencil of the Sailor Moon, I had noticed that this crayon gelato just went everywhere. And even after it dried, it still was movable. And anytime I swept my hands across it, I was continuously smudging this now on my pristine white Sailor Moon outline, which frustrated me even more. So I decided to ditch those products because I wasn't going to get the colors I wanted for Sailor Moon anyway, and pulled out my watercolors and began to watercolor in the Sailor Moon. Because I had to use a stencil for the Sailor Moon, I lost the initial flow for the sketch. And so when I redid it again, she just kind of looked wonky. She's kind of like the mule faced Sailor Moon. <laughs> To top it off, I had to outline her using the really thick pen. And by this point, I was just done with this product. I really like the Smart Art boxes, but I did not like this product. I was grumpy. My Sailor Moon pop art didn't pop. It flopped. And I was just done. This was the end of the video. I was just going to wrap it up as, you know, sometimes you get products you like, sometimes you get products you don't like. And I was done. 
After I finished that video, I was getting ready to edit it. All I could think of was I was denied the chance to create my Sailor Moon. So I went back and pulled out another piece of paper and with my art supplies created the Sailor Moon. And I was going to have this kind of be the end clip of this video saying, see, I can't draw Sailor Moon if I want to. Give me my art supplies. I have to tell you, I was so grumpy at these art supplies that I literally threw them away. Now, jump ahead a few hours later, I've eaten, I've calmed down, and then I realized the focus of these boxes isn't to give me my comfort zone. If that was the case, I would subscribe to a watercolor Copic art box, which do they make such a thing? But it doesn't matter. I already have those products. The smart art box wants to challenge me to do something that might be out of my comfort zone. And this is really out of my comfort zone. But for me to just give up or do a half-hearted job just because I don't like the way the product works is defeating the whole purpose. It's to challenge me, to grow me as an artist. So I decided I'm going to give it another go. I went to the trash can, I pulled out all of the supplies, and I began again. The products were still the same. The paper was still the same. The thing that had changed was my attitude. I had a teachable, learnable attitude. And as an artist, that's an important thing to have. It's okay to get frustrated, to get annoyed with something, and it's okay to have art products you don't like. But when you are trying to actively learn something, if you go into that project, whether it's art or anything else related, if you go into that thing with an unteachable attitude that I'm not going to get this, no one can force me to like this, man, you're setting yourself up to fail. When I went back to this piece with an attitude that I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try to make these products work for me and see what happens. The change in my attitude, I think, is reflected in the change of this piece. And if any of you guys leave a comment saying, I like the first time I'm doing better. Well, thank you. That's kind of you to say. But I love this this piece here. It's a style I've never done before. I love it. And I will tell you that these gelatos are not in the trash. They're with my art supplies because I found that, yeah, they may not be my favorite, but they can create really cool art. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. I definitely learned from creating this video. If you're interested in the Smart Art Box, I'll leave a link to their website in the description box below so you can check it out yourself. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me. If you're brand new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And as always, God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.